Welcome to being at home with George during this time of COVID. And I'd like to remind us that what we do is we create this possibility of embracing whatever comes up, saying yes to it, and at the same time generating the hope. And so today I would like to talk about this idea of feeling the fear and doing it anyway. And this idea of how do we get to that barrier that prevents us, that limits us from doing things. And so one of the top fears that we have as human beings is speaking in public. And so I'd like to share my experience of speaking in public. So about 35 years ago, I was involved in an organization called Postmasters. And at the company I was working at, we had an in-house process to do that. And I remember that I would have to get up and talk in public. And I used to be so nervous that I would shake. And so it was around that time that I was going to graduate school and I was studying psychology and I was reading Viktor Frankl and his whole idea of man's search for meaning in this process he calls logotherapy. And part of the process of logotherapy is what he called paradoxical intention, which had to do with when you had fear, instead of running away from it, you do what Robert Frost talks about. The only way out is always through. Instead of trying not to do something, you intend to do what you're afraid of doing. Whatever you fear doing, you do it. And so I applied this theory. And so when I got up in front of the, the group to speak, before getting up there, I said to myself that I was going to be a shaken fool. So instead of trying not to shake, I was going to be the best shaker there was. And when I got up in, in front to speak to the audience, I stopped shaking. And so there was this thing about feel the fear and do it anyway. And I've been given a lot of talks, a lot of speeches since then. And I realized that each time over the years that I would do what I wanted to do, to feel the fear and, and do it anyway, that it was helpful. And I'm reminded of what Emerson said. He said, do the thing and you will have the power. And this actually harkens back to my recovery, where how I got clean was I had to behave my way into proper thinking. So I had to do the things without thinking about it. So for me, that meant to, to be vulnerable and to, as we would like to say, take the cotton out of my ears, put it in my mouth and sit up front and act like I didn't know anything. And so it this ability to be vulnerable and to be willing to be influenced was a big part of that. And so that was, once again, feeling the fear and doing it anyway. And so I realized over the years, given talks all the time and even these at homes, that each time that I was getting up and doing it anyway, uh, doing the thing and having the power to do it, that I was doing what they call exposure therapy. I was doing what I was afraid to do, but by continuing to do it each time and got a little bit easier. And this is, I like to talk about this circular learning or doing things repeatedly, you know, repetition. And each time you do something, you do it with a little bit more awareness, a little, little bit more courage, because it's not like the fear is not there. But then it gets to the point where it's not a big deal. And so now when I reflect back 35 years later, it's interesting how that impacted me. And so last night I had the opportunity to give a presentation in person, the first one I've given since February 28th, 2020, at this college, uh, local college, not far from where I live. And it was in an auditorium, and it was supposed to be maybe 200 uh, student athletes that were going to attend. And everybody on campus had been vaccinated, so there wasn't an issue, even though they did wear masks when they got in there. So I had this opportunity in the time of COVID to go in to this place to, to give this presentation. So it turned out that it wasn't 200. When I got there, the sponsor said to me that the woman that I was dealing with, she said there were, might be about 400 showed up. Turns out over 700 people showed up and we had a fantastic time. And I just realized that it took a lot of courage. Most people would say, well, I'm not doing this, but I had the courage and the desire to be in this place. And they were amazing. It was an amazing audience. We talked about amazing things. And so when I reflect on what's the benefit of being courageous, like going back 35 years ago, being a shaken fool, and then not shaken, and then now just getting up there 
and just speaking from the heart, talking about my recovery, being vulnerable, talking about what it was like when I was in college and how it wasn't a great experience for me in my undergraduate years, but in my graduate years, it was very exciting. And a lot of it had to do with this ability to learn how to learn and through the learning, achieving things and then generating this enthusiasm, this excitement about life, about learning things. And so the way to learn things is to be vulnerable. And that's how we learn to trust. And so this idea of feeling the fear and doing it anyway, and understanding, as Emerson said, do the thing and you will have the power. That's been my experience. And so now as we're confronted with all the uncertainties, whether to go out or not, and of course, you know, I've been vaccinated and I wore a mask when I wasn't speaking and all of that, but just the idea of taking the advantage to be here now and to be able to Yes, it's COVID and yes, there's things that are happening, but there's a way that we can be together. And it's my understanding that this college uh, was open during COVID because they had these protocols, whatever it was, and they were able to figure it out in their small community. And so that speaks volumes to us that there had to be a lot of courage, a lot of people that were willing to engage in learning in spite of all of the potential dangers of COVID. They seem to have figured it out and now they're all vaccinated and we had an, a great time. And so to me, it's about being courageous. So how many other times I can tell you, even last night when I was working with these young folks and uh, I had some books that I was selling and these young folks don't really carry cash. They don't kind of, you know, if they have credit cards, it's in a wallet and Apple or whatever. So anyway, there were four people that had cash. The other eight that were buying books, they had to use Venmo. So they said, oh, do you have Venmo? And I said, well, I don't know. And I looked on my phone and I downloaded it and was able to have Venmo on my phone. And then they showed me how to use it. And then that's what we did. I was able to be vulnerable enough to allow them to show me how to use Venmo. And they were happy and I wasn't worried about them thinking that here I am giving a presentation and I don't know about Venmo. It was just me being courageous and say, well, I don't know how this works, but let's see what happens. And a lot of my life is like that, these new gadgets and everything, not knowing what's going to happen and then doing it anyway. And so there's many opportunities for us to do the thing and have the power to feel the fear and do it anyway and to work through it. And as Robert Frost says, the only way out is through. So my whole intention here is to encourage us to be courageous, not to take foolish risks or put ourselves in jeopardy, but there's little things like being able to speak to someone or be able to uh, resolve a conflict that we may be having with somebody by just being willing to communicate, being willing to get out of our comfort zone, being willing to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. So this week we were talking about uh, feeling the fear and doing it anyway, this idea of the importance of being courageous, having courage. And so I have a six week study group coming up on my the Mindful Athlete online course is coming up in a couple of weeks. And the title, the theme is going to be being courageous. And the reason I selected that theme is because in this time of uncertainty and angst and fear that what is called for is courage, the courage to, to do the things that we know to do, the courage to feel the fear and to do it anyway, and to understand that with this time of uncertainty, there's a lot of unknowns. And so we have to figure out things on the fly. And what helps me to do that is when I am willing to be vulnerable, when I'm willing to bring courage because it's fear, but I feel the fear and do it anyway. And as Emerson said, do the thing and you will have the power. It's the same thing in terms of uh, what Robert Frost said when he said the only way out is always through. And so giving people the tools to be courageous in this time of uncertainty of challenges and unknowns that we can explore and practice. If you want to learn more about this idea of being courageous, you can go to my website, georgemumford.com, and either join the course or find out about some of the other programs. We also have a masterclass on dealing with anxiety.